Hello everyone and welcome back to today's video. Today we are installing a RedM server. I did promise this a long time ago and I have finally figured out how it actually works. So today we are going to be doing it. First things first, please consider subscribing. It really helps us out. We're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you could be a part of that, that would be great. Also, YouTube has poked me to um, pretty much tell you that there is a new feature out called Thanks. It allows you to add a comment with a donation of all Obviously, that is completely optional, but I did get a poke in YouTube Studio to try it out with you all, so we are doing that as well. Alright, so let's get straight into this. There's a few things you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need RedM. If you haven't seen our video on installing RedM, I'll leave a link and in the top right-hand corner with the cards. Um, pretty much, it will take a while to install. A lot of people ask me, why does it take, like, four hours to get RedM installed for the client itself? Excuse my dog in the background. The client itself actually uses peer-to-peer -peer downloading for caching. They don't go from a server because that would break Rockstar's rules. So it will take, it depends on how many people are playing RedM at the time to download the client. So it will take a while and um, that is why it's so slow. Um, but once you get the client installed, you're ready to set up your own server. We are going to be going over the Windows install for the server today. It can run on Linux if you know how to do it on Linux. I'm still learning how to set this up on Linux, but when I have a video on the 5M setup for Linux, I'll do one on RedM as well. So a few things you are going to need before you set up your server. You are going to need Git for Windows. Um, you can go to this site um, and you just go ahead and click the Windows button. You'll go ahead and download it and install this. The reason you need this is because you're going to be using a Git command to actually get your server data info. And you're also going to need Visual uh, Studio, or not Visual Studio, but you're going to need the Visual uh, C++ script type of thing that Windows uses. Most people already have this installed, but it's good to just get a double check that you have it installed. A direct link to the download will be located in the description, so you don't even have to go to this page to do it. You're going to need a key master key. We're going to go over the process of setting this up momentarily when we're in our setup, so don't worry about that. And you're going to need to know what your IP is, and we can also go over that as well. So let's go ahead and get started straight off the bat. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to a folder inside of our PC that is a pretty much going to be your main drive. The reason we don't do it on your desktop or something like that is because it's not going to get the folder names correctly. It's going to become a mess. If you have a space in your folder name, it's going to break. We don't want to deal with any of that. So we're going to go to our local disk C. And in this is where we're going to create a folder. We're going to create a folder and I'm going to call it red M Y T server just to keep it pretty easy on what we're talking about here. And this is just going to be where we're going to house our two folders, which we're going to create. So let's go ahead and create these folders. The first folder, we're going to go ahead and create a new folder and we're going to name this server data. And we're going to create another one called server dash files just like that. And what we're going to do first of all is we're going to go ahead and download the latest uh, runtime artifact for Red M or technically 5M. The link to this is also in the description. And what you're going to want to do is they're going to update this page quite often with new artifacts. So you're going to want to come back here every few weeks and replace your server data artifacts with these because these are the ones you're going to want the re latest recommended of. Things get updated all the time. Things get fixed. You'll want to be running the recommended artifacts. So you're going to go ahead and just click latest recommended. It will go ahead and download. Open this up with WinZip, 7-Zip, WinRAR, whatever you use to open up um, zip files for you. And we're going to go into the server files, and we're going to extract every single one of the things which was in here. And obviously, if you need to update your server files at all, all you would do is re-download the latest artifact and drag it in and replace any that are currently in here. It's that simple to update. Hopefully, um, if you need a video on that, let me know. I would be happy to do one. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our other folder into our server data folder itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to right click. If you installed Git for Windows correctly, you're going to see a Git Bash here option. Go ahead and click this. This will open up a little window, and what we're going to do is we're going to copy a line from the description of this video, which is git clone, the name of the folder, so this is what we're going to be cloning, which is the server data folder for 
um, 5M and all of the 5M type setups. So that's Liberty M, which isn't public pretty much yet, and Red M as well. But make sure you have this dot period at the end and go ahead and click enter and you can see below it, it will install the resources folder, which is what we actually need in this case. All right, so for our next step, we're gonna go ahead and click this little down arrow. Well, not this little down arrow, the little down arrow in the top right hand corner of the Windows File Explorer. You're gonna go over to view and you're gonna make sure file name extensions is clicked on. The reason we're gonna do this is because in the next step, we're gonna right click, click new, go to text document, and we're gonna rename this full text document, including the file name extension, and we're gonna name it server.cfg. Go ahead and you'll get this pop-up, go ahead and press yes, and you can see it has changed to a um, non-like editable Word file. But if you right click this, you can open it with either Notepad++, which I recommend, or if you go through the prompts, you can open it with Notepad, but I highly recommend opening it with Notepad++. And then you're gonna have this blank file here. Now, if you don't, if you haven't played 5M or haven't set up a 5M server before, the way that um, these projects do like, um, server handling is by a server.cfg file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the current default server.cfg file, which is used in both 5M and Red M. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below and put it in here. Now, please note, if you are running both a 5M and a Red M server, they run on the same port. So please be careful about this because if you need to run both at the same time on the same machine, you may want to change the port up for Red M versus 5M just to keep it easy because if you're going to have both running on the same port, it's not going to work. One of them's not going to work when the other one started. So keep that in mind. You can change the ports all the way at the top if you need to. All right. So you can see we have the default um, resources and these are inside the resource folder already. You do not have to mess with these at all. And you have script hooks. Script hook can be allowed from what I know in Red M as well, um, but I don't think there's any trainers that really work with it. So in my case, I will set it to allow, but I'm not going to do anything with it in this case. We're going to keep all the tags default. We're going to keep everything default. We'll change the name to BGHD Dev YT Red M Tutorial Server. I don't know. I'm just going to name it something. And I'll just copy this name for my project name down here. Um, and then you can set your description. Just going to keep it the default. We're going to go ahead and not do a server icon not do any of that. Uh, we can just, if you want to remove it from the server list, I'll leave a list to the ports that you're gonna need down in the description as well to port forward if you wanna show it up in the server list and stuff. I will be doing a video on that in the coming future now that I got my new router, so also stay tuned for that. You can set one thing on or off. I don't know if this works with Red M. From what I know, it does. I'm gonna leave it on at this point, um, but Obviously, you may not, uh, it may not actually do anything. I'm not 100% sure. You can set your max clients from 48 um, upwards if you have one of their Patreon subscriptions. If you want to set up your Steam API key, if anything in your server requires that, because there are resources made using the Steam API keys and stuff, go watch our video on Steam API keys for 5M. It's the exact same thing for this. You can paste it in here. I'll leave another tag and link in the description. And then this is where your license key comes into play. And this is where everything gets 100% more complicated. I get why 5M does this to protect um, you're using like only home hosting, only VPSs with dedicated routes or zap hosting, but it does get annoying. So we have our license key and it's going to say change me. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go in to um, Red M here and we're going to have to open up Keymaster. And this is at keymaster.5m.net. If you already have a key here like I do, I recommend using the same key. There's no reason to register another key. Though, if you don't already have a key here, you're going to see at the top that you can register one out of three keys or however many um, keys you currently have. It's going to say you can register another one. So we're going to go ahead and register another one in this case. All right, so this is the display name. So I'm going to call this Red M Y T Server just because it's easy. Um, we're going to do this in a moment. Our server type is going to be home hosted. And then we're just going to say home hosted in the other provider. In the internal server IP address, this is actually going to ping their servers when you start up the server to check your license if it's valid or not. If you have a firewall or something blocking this, you may receive an error. Make sure to check those firewalls and stuff. But if you just go online and type in what is my IP4 address, 
This will take you to a billion sites that let you see it. One of them is what my IP is. Um, what is my IP address? Dot com. I recommend this one just because it's easy. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy where it says IP4. It's going to be a little bit blurry. Just copy this. Go back to your server uh, management key, uh, key master page and go ahead and paste that IP in. Complete the captcha and click generate. This will take a moment and then you will have your server. It will say IP locked will be activated on first use. So this IP can has to be the one to activate this key. And then you're just going to click copy where it says key. This will copy it. Go back into your uh, server.cfg file, put two uh, parentheses and put the key in between and save the file. That's all we have to do there. We are good to go from there. Now we're gonna go in and create a start.bat file. Um, a lot of people have problems with these. It's not that difficult to set up, so we're going to go ahead and go through it real quick. We're going to right click, we're going to go down to new, we're going to go down to text document, and we're going to do start, and then change the dot text at the end to dot bat. Go ahead and press enter, once again it will pop up this warning, and just go ahead and click yes. Alright, so once you have your start.bat here, we're going to right click, and we're once again going to edit with notepad++ or notepad, and we're going to type a few things in here. The first thing we're going to type in is cd, and then we're going to type slash d, space and this is where we're going to get our server data folder from so you're going to go back into your windows file um, mover thingy here explorer that's the word click in this top little row and you'll see it will highlight this Control c and Control v it straight in here then you're going to go to the next line and you're going to go back to where your server files are and this is you're going to do the exact same thing paste in your server file location but then you're going to add another backslash and type fx server can't type Dot exe, and then you're going to do plus exec server.cfg. We're not done yet. Then you're going to do dot plus set game name. Make sure you can spell rd3. And then on the next line, type at pause. All right, so one thing I noticed later on in the video, and I'm going to edit this back into the original part, is you're going to need, I completely forgot about this, it's not RD3, it's RDR3, so make sure you just go ahead and fix that at this point in the video. Do apologize about that. Let's get back into the video. Go ahead and save that. So let's go over what this is actually doing. We are going into our server data folder. We are then navigating to our FX server exe file, executing that, using the server.cfg from that server data folder. And we're setting the game name to Red Dead 3, so it knows we're not running 5M. The pause at the end makes it so the window will not close if we have an error, so you can actually read that error. Pretty cool, right? Alright, so if we go back into our server data folder, we now have our start.bat. Let's double click on it, and it will go ahead and load up. Ask for permission, obviously allow it. The first time it loads up, it's going to install all of the different scripts and everything and dependencies it requires. Give this a few minutes, and once it's done, you will go ahead and be able to join your server. What I recommend doing is once it's done, once it says done in 8.6 seconds, go ahead and um, just close out this window, and then go ahead and double click the start.bat once again. And there we go. We are good to go. We can join on Red M. So let's launch Red M, try to join, and see what happens. All right, so we are in our Red M main menu here. Kind of looks exactly like 5M, right? So what you're going to do is you're just going to click the big play button, and you're going to type localhost. Press enter, and you can see we have our BGHD Dev YT Red M tutorial server. If you have port forwarded, you could also enter your public IP address here. And then you're just... All right, so you can see we are now connecting into our server, which is terrific. We kind of know we did it correctly at this point. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and let it load. Obviously, we're not going to have any resources. A lot of stuff is not going to work because it's built for online capabilities. Um, so you're just going to have to mess around with it, find some resources on the forums, install it just like anything else. One thing I kind of did notice about Red M compared to the default um, uh, Red Dead Redemption 3's online features and all of that is stuff loading in a lot slower in terms of textures um, I don't know if this is just something with how they're porting it or something but you're gonna run into issues like that off obviously as well some of the interiors will work some of them will be missing things as well because they just aren't ported from the online version because Rockstar would probably get mad about that though you have do you do have NPCs you do have like the ability to punk they'll react to it and all of that good stuff as well um, if you would like to see some 
um, videos on how to install some of my recommended uh, Red M type resources, which include a few trainers and stuff like that. I would be happy to go over those as well. Um, so please let me know down in the comments on what you would like to see. If you have a resource in mind, also please let me know as well. But you can walk into all the buildings, all that good stuff, um, and have some fun with it too. So please let me know what you want to see. I would love to um, showcase more of this as well in the future. While I go beat up everybody in the bar, I hope you are all having a good time and I hope you got your server up and running. Please let me know down in the comments if there is any problems with this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment and have a great rest of your week. Goodbye everyone.